In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of using arrays in C. So arrays in C allow us to work with a collection of data that has the same type. And typically that collection of data is related somehow. So why do we really need arrays? I can show you with an example here. Let's say we have a classroom and we want to represent the grade of each student in that class. We could do it with conventional variables. So we could say like int grade one is equal to and give the first student a grade. We'll say int grade two is equal to, we'll give the second student a grade. Int grade three is equal to, and we'll give the third student a grade. And we'll say we've got maybe a classroom of three here. And I can do that, right? I can represent a collection of data with a bunch of individual variables like this. And I could work with them too. Like I could compute a average, so I could compute maybe the total first. So add together the three grades. And then I could compute an average and maybe take the total divided by three and I could print out the average and, and we can we can work with the data like this and it'll it'll work in terms of actually computing the, the right answers. And you know, we could compile this just to be sure, but this is an example of you know solving this problem of, of a group of data with our conventional variables in C. Now the problem is is that this is not going to scale well at all. So let's say that it's next semester now or it's the next year, and now we have five students in our class. I could add two more variables here, but then anywhere in my program where I'm kind of using this group of variables together, I'd have to add the variables there too. And what if in a more realistic kind of scenario, I don't have just have three students or five students in my class. What if I have a hundred? What if I have 1100 or, or 2000 in my class, which, which happens in very large classes in, you know, maybe the first year of a college or something like that. What am I going to do? Am I going to have like 2000 grade variables that are all you know, being added together like this, that's going to be a very large chunk of source code there. So this approach is not going to scale very well. We need a better way of representing a group of related data. So let's do that with an array. So an array allows us to declare this collection of data that's going to have the same type, and we're going to use the same name to address that data. So it looks like this. I'm going to say here int grade, and I'm going to say here five. So what this does is it declares a variable that is an array called grade. And int means that grade is going to store integers. And this open bracket, close bracket with the five in the middle there, that's saying that it's going to store five ints. So there's going to be space for five integers in this array here. So what we have in memory is something that looks like this. We have this grade array in memory, and we have basically five positions in memory. And we access those positions in memory with what's called the index. So we have this index into the array, and it actually starts from zero, which is kind of interesting. There's a lot of things in programming where you'll find that we actually start counting from zero. And it's kind of a meme or a joke that you know programmers count from zero. But the first position in the array where we can store one of these five values is given by this index zero here. And so what I could do is I could say here, grade at zero is equal to, and I could say 91. And when I do that, what happens is at this index zero in the grade array that stores five ints, we're gonna store the value 91. If I said here grade, one is equal to 82, we're going to store at index one, the value 82. And I can access these indexes as well. And I can use them to do things like print. So I could say here like print F and I could say grade, I'll say zero here is equal to percent D. And then I can print out what grade at zero is. So I can use this grade at the zeroth index here like I can any variable. So if I save this here and run this, we'll be able to output that grade at zero is 91. And I could keep going here. So I could say like grade at two is equal to 73. And again, that's gonna basically fill in this index two position in memory in the grade array at, with 73. I could say grade three is equal to, and I'm gonna say here 64. And I'll say grade four is equal to, and I'll say 55. And then our array is going to look like this. I'm going to have uh, 64 here at three 
and 55 here at four. And now I've got this group of data that I can work with and I can access the individual values in that array using the index. So each of these like five values that we're storing, they're stored using an index and they start from zero and they go up until one less than the actual size of the array because we start at zero. And once I've got my data like this, I can actually make it easier to work with than if I had individual variables. So let's say I want to print out all the values in this array here. What I could do is I could have a series of printf. So I could say like printf grade zero, and I'll make printfs for the others as well. So we'll do like one, two, three, four, and we don't really need this last one here, but we got one, we got zero, one, two, three, four here. And I'm gonna print out grade at zero, one, two, three, four here. And this will print out all the grades. And so we could compile this and run it. And now we're printing out all the grades in our array here. And this is one way of working with this data. But now what I can do, because I can address the grades here in the array using this index, I can use a variable to access the data here. So let's say, for example, I do this. I say int i is equal to zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the grade here according to i. So I'm going to say i. Now I'm going to say here i plus plus, and I'll say i, i plus plus, and I'll say i, and I'll keep doing this, i plus plus, and then I'll say i, i plus plus, and then I'll say i. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a variable now to access the grades. So this is initially going to be, and I, I could actually add an i here too. I might as well add it in here as well. I'll say i, I'll say percent d, percent d, percent d, percent d. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a variable now to actually access the data in the array. So I'm using i as a variable to access the array according to the index i. And so if I do this here, I'm going to get the exact same results as before. But the difference is now is I'm using this variable i to access the grade array. And I'm modifying i, I'm incrementing it by one each time. So that way I'm accessing the next thing in the grade array with each subsequent printf. So what this allows us to do is write loops and we can write loops that will actually work with our data now in an array according to some index variable that's probably gonna be the counter variable for our array. So I could take this code and I could write it like this. I could say here four and I'll say here, I'll say four and I'll say int i is equal to zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And I'm going to say print F and I'll say grade percent D is equal to percent D. And then I'll say here slash N I and grade at I. And what I'm doing here is I'm printing out grade at I that starts at zero. There is equal to grade at I, which is the actual value in the array. And then I'm incrementing I by one each time. So I'm basically doing exactly what I had before, but this time it's in a loop where I'm incrementing I each iteration of the loop from zero until five, but not including five. So it's gonna go up until grade four. And if I run this here, I'm gonna get the same output as before. But what's nice about this approach is number one, look at how much shorter my code is. Number two, this is gonna scale way better because let's say I add another grade let's say that I actually add a sixth grade. So I'm going to say here grade six and I'll say grade six here. And I'll say maybe this one is equal to, we'll say 43. If I want this code to still work with this new grade array, all I have to do is change this. All I have to do is change the, the sort of length of the array that I'm working with here. And this code is still going to work fine and it doesn't get any larger. So this is going to scale way better. I could work with larger and larger data sets and my code doesn't really need to change much, if at all. And even this here, this number here, I'm kind of hard coding a number in there. We could make that a variable, or we could use what's called a constant to define that as well. And so we're going to be able to write code to work with groups of data where our code doesn't have to change a lot, if at all, when we make changes to the size of that data. So that's a big thing with arrays. And we could, we could run this here just to make sure it's going to work. 
And it says warning here. Oh, you know what I did? I put uh, grade six there. It's grade five. It's grade five, right? Because we start counting from zero. Okay, so I run this here. And, you know, now we get grade five is printed out and it's 43. And that makes sense. And we're happy. Now, what I did here was I declared the array and then I initialized the values in the array individually underneath it. You can do it this way, but there's a couple other ways you could do it that would take up less lines of code. So one way we could do it is this, and I'm going to go back to being a length five array, a length five array. So I'm going to say here five and five. We could do it like this. I could say is equals to squiggly bracket. And I could say here 91, 82, 73, 64, 55. This will actually do the exact same thing. This will actually initialize the grade array with 91 in the first index, 82 in the second index, 73 in the third, uh, and 64 in the fourth, and 55 in the fifth index. And so we could, we could run this here, and we'll get grades from zero to, to four there being printed out. And another way we could do it is this. I could actually get rid of this here. I could get rid of the five there, and this will also work fine. This will also initialize the grade array in the same way because basically the C compiler can tell by the um, number of elements we've got here, by the number of grades we've got here, how big the array is. And it knows that like, okay, they wanna make an array of length five. So you don't actually need the five there. You could actually take out that number there and it'll still work fine. So one thing we should discuss is a little bit of the terminology. So the values here, these are typically called array elements. We call these the elements of the array because they're, they're the individual things inside of the array. Now, another thing we might want to do is work with our array to compute an average. And that's another thing we could do. So I'll just show you that just using working with our array to compute an average. So I could say here, I'll say four int i is equal to zero. i is less than five, i plus plus, which is pretty much the same thing as before. But I'm going to say here now int total is equal to zero. And I'm going to say that we're going to total the values in the array. So I'm going to say total is equal to total plus grade at i. Then once we've got the total, I'm going to compute the average. So I'm going to say int average is equal to total divided by five. And then I'll print out the average. I'll say average percent d and I'll print out the average here. And so we'll run this here. and we get an average of 73. And again, this is an algorithm now that's expressed in a way that's going to scale because if I need to change the number of grades here in my array, it's just a matter of really just changing this number here. And this is a number that could be a variable. It could be what's called a constant as well. And this is why we really like to work with arrays. Now there's more to arrays that we might wanna do. We might wanna read data into an array we might want to pass arrays to a function. We might want to use what are called 2D arrays, but I'm actually going to save those for other tutorial videos just to keep this one a reasonable length and just to give you a, a quick introduction to the basics of arrays. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.